I would like to uh, uh, introduce uh, Tatiana Kolomitsova. Uh, she is an independent researcher in Moscow, Russia. She got her PhD in history of Russian philosophy in Yekaterinburg in 2012. Uh, and uh, from 2011 to 2017, she taught philosophy in higher educational institutions in Yekaterinburg and Moscow. Uh, she has also run um, the science blogs entitled How to Finish Your Th Thesis and Hegel and Russia. Please, Tatiana, the floor is yours. Thank you, and uh, thank you for having me here. I'm very great. I'm very uh, glad and grateful. Uh, so let's go on to the next slide, please. Uh, so the next slide, please. Yes, <laughs> here they are. Uh, the names of Natalia Ilyina Vokic and Ernst Kunik are rather exotic for Russian historiography. The first has the title of the wife of the philosopher Ivan Ilyin. The second has the fame of a German who left poorly understood linguistic research. While Natalia Ilyina Vokic and Ernst Kunik are real people uh, who are are not well known uh, by posterity. Their object of study, uh, the Varangians in Russian history, has long balanced between truth and fiction. In my talk, I try to connect the fate of two historians and the theme of the fate of Russia, of which they discussed. So, next slide, please. Yes. Uh, first, I will outline an intellectual portrait of them, and uh, I will choose several points on which I will describe them. With this, we will see how the philosophy of history has developed in Russia. Then, I will briefly describe the problem that became the subject of study for Natalia Ilyina and Ernst Kunik. I will outline the peculiarities of the historical time in which Natalia Ilina and Ernst Kunik uh, addressed uh, this problem. I'm going to outline the position that both have taken in their writings on this question. Then I will consider how Ernst Kunik's position is represented in Natalia Ilina's book. I will make a conclusion about the place of Natalia Ilina's text in the world the philosophy of history and why only her work on history is widely known. Next slide, please. Thank you. Uh, so um, um, my talk aims at uh, these three points, uh, which are analyzing uh, the text by Natalia Ilina, expulsion of the Normans, the next task of Russian historical science. Uh, and I want to show its features as a historical book. Then I want to consider its place in the historiography and uh, in uh, the intellectual history of Natalia Ilina Vokic. Uh, and I want to show Natalia Ilina Vokic as a part of uh, the intellectual historical tradition. Next slide, please. Mm -hmm. uh, the interest in the relationships, uh, in the relationship between language, reality, and the historical narratives uh, is uh, the characteristic of Frank Anke Smith's philosophy of history. In this article, um, I aim, uh, uh, and uh, in this uh, talk, I aim at using Anke Smith's uh, methodology of uh, history and anthropology, the rise and fall of metaphor, uh, to analyze the reception of Ernst Kunig's writings of Natalia Irina. Next slide, please. Thank you. Uh, so let's move uh, to the comparison. Ernst Kunig attended history lectures in Breslau and graduated in philosophy from Berlin University. Natalia Irina uh, Vokac uh, uh, graduated from uh, the history and philosophy department of the higher women's courses in Moscow. She also attended philosophy lectures in Germany and studied art in Italy. 
Uh, then, for Ernst Kunik, German was his native language. Natalia Ilina uh, earned her living translating from German. Uh, she translated books by Zimmel and others. Kunik's career did not take shape in his homeland, but in Russia, where he lived most of his life. Natalia Ilina wrote her history book in uh, uh, the other country in Switzerland, uh, or where she was forced to go after she and her husband were asked to leave Germany. Uh, even earlier, uh, the Bolsheviki had deported her and her husband on the philosophy steamer. Anker uh, Smith uh, points out that, in, const uh, in contrast to Enlightenment, the historian uh, is. Uh, um, and then outside the social order. Uh, he is disconnected from society. Anke Smith wrote, the more we make the world, uh, for example, the past outside us, strange, alien, uh, the fuller our insight in ourselves will become. This insight uh, that um, uh, this estrangement from reality is the price we might pay uh, for self-knowledge. Uh, and it was, I believe, one of the principal sources of romantic despair. For the Enlightenment, uh, self-knowledge was the condition for an optimistic belief in the integration of the individual into society. Kunik and Ilina are the historians uh, who were disconnected from their native society and it strengthened the uh, their analysis. Both uh, Ernst Kunik and Natalia Lina tended to idealism in philosophy. For Kunik, the concept of the spirit of language is important, uh, uh, Sprachgeist. Uh, for Ilina, uh, what matters is the spirit, I'm sorry, so the idealism. Uh, both Kunik and Natalia Ilina tend to idealism philosophy. Uh, for Kunik, uh, the concept of the spirit of language is important. And for Ilina, uh, what matters is uh, the spirit of people, the cell structure of their contemplation. Next slide, please. Yes, thank you. Um, were the founders of the Russian state, uh, oh, I'm sorry, or oh, were the founders of the Russian state Normans or Slavs? Is it true that Slavs invited Norman or Varangian Rurik uh, because they were tired of the mess of life? The answer to these questions uh, has changed the, over the centuries. When Russia was at war with Sweden, Rurik was considered a Slav. Under Catherine the Great, there was a bust of Queen Christina of Sweden uh, in the Acad Academy of Sciences under the guidance of uh, Catherine Dashkova, a friend of uh, the Empress. At that time, Rurik was considered as Norman. After Catherine the Great's death, her son, her son Pavel's policy was to get rid of respect for his mother in the nation's creation. Professional historians appeared uh, who claimed that Rurik was a Slav. And so the situation went back and forth. Next slide, please. Yes. Uh, our land is great and plentiful, but there is no order in it. And uh, so go and reign and rule over us. According to Nestor, with such words in 862, uh, Slavic ambassadors appealed to the Varangians from the tribe of Rus. The lack of information has generated thousands of pages of uh, historical con controversy. Next slide, please. Thank you. Uh, in the 19th century, it was commonly believed that uh, the Romanov dynasty dates back to Rurik. The Varangian question became the key issue in uh, Russian history. Uh, it was a question not only of the legitimacy, leg uh, legitimacy of the dynasty, but also of the foundations of the powerless position of the peasants and uh, serfdom. Uh, 
Here you can see a quote from uh, the historian Zabelin uh, from the 19th century. He is almost quoting Kant with his uh, What is the Enlightenment? Uh, Zabelin criticizes the fact uh, that the proponents of the normal theory liken the Russian people to children. Thank you. Uh, next slide, please. Ernst Koenig is called uh, a Hegelian, but Hegel would not have approved of his method in history. Uh, in this preface uh, to his lectures on aesthetics, Hegel points out that random facts are not important for history. Uh, and uh, in his philosophy, philosophy of history, we will directly find a critique of the application of linguistics to history. Uh, it was his um, linguistic approach coupled with the reputation as a Hegelian that created Koenig's reputation as a, a Schola in Russian. Uh, Koenig applies the basic rule of comparative grammar, applying the historical genetic method as followed by Grimm in uh, Germany. Roughly speaking, he searches the Slavs from the uh, from the chronicles to the present day for various words, compares their soundings and draws conclusions about the history and the people themselves. Thus, for example, the pearls for him are incapable of state affairs. Not surprisingly, uh, he enjoyed great success in Russia in the 19th century. Next slide, please. Yes, Natalia Ilyina writes her book, uh, 1011 years after Kunik, uh, and uh, it was after the Second World War in uh, immigration. Her circle of contacts uh, was um, the supporters of the white movement. Uh, not all of them agree uh, with Natalia Ilyina on her position uh, on uh, Mm, on this question, uh, there is evidence of heated arguments. Uh, in her book, Irina demonstrates an excellent command of different points of view on the Varangian question by Russian historians of the 19th century. She postulates the possibility for historian to create his own sense of history. Natalia Irina uh, um, proposes a her own methodological framework. Frank Conker Smith divides um, reality, language, and narrative propo proposals. He points out that, quotation, a universally agreed upon proposal has hardened into a historical phenomenon which is part of the past itself. Language can develop the understanding of reality and a narrative proposal. Studying the language will work with uh, the reality and can, ch and can change a narrative proposal. That was clearly what both Ernst Kunik and Natalia Irina Vokic did. They focused on language and attempted to create the reality of the past. A few words from Nestor's Chronicle turned uh, to two different realities behind the word Varangians. Next slide, please. Mm -hmm. uh, so Natalia Lina wrote that uh, uh, the value of a uh, linguistic uh, interference, um, uh, I'm sorry, inference now uh, for historical research can and must be tested by comparing with the phenomenon of life. The correct consideration of this, uh, the previous, um, um, yes, this. Uh, so the correct consider consideration of this or uh, that name is intended to help explain those phenomena which are associated with that name. The first part of your book consists uh, of um, um, uh, uh, different writings of Norman theory are uh, based uh, on formal logic. Lina often uses the method of proof by contradiction. Anker Smith points out that uh, it is logic that creates the space between interpretations. And this, uh, in turn, is what we can think of a truth. 
Natalia Irina creates this space by involving a variety of sources from Russian history and then uh, using the method of proof by contradiction, uh, she creates uh, this uh, space uh, between uh, interpretation. Uh, then um, concerning the critique of Aaron Skunik's views, I must uh, say that uh, for Lina, Kunik is conscientious, solemnly rejecting, but reflexive. His methodology does not stand up to the criticism of logic uh, for Ilyina. Natalia Ilyina is against to one-sided uh, sidedness of Kunik's method. Uh, but she takes uh, from it an interest in words and culture, and she combines it all to create her own concept. Next slide, please. Uh, so, uh, concerning the place of Natalia Lina's research uh, in the process of the philosophy of history in the world, uh, firstly, we can mention uh, what Nietzsche said about uh, historians, uh, the work of, uh, of a historian. And here on the slide, uh, we can see that he uh, think that the work of historian uh, is uh, like art. Uh, so the historian is some kind of poet or reality. Yes. Thank you. Uh, the next slide, please. Uh -huh. Uh, and um, the method of uh, Natalia Ilina uh, is um, to point out that the previous works on the Rengen question um, are not the truth itself. So here on the slide, we can see the quotation from her book. And uh, she says that uh, they are the historical interpretations. And uh, uh, that's really important uh, um, uh, if we use the methodology of Frank Anker Smith. Uh, his, uh, Anker Smith, he, he says that, um, he says that uh, the epoch of the 19th century, the epoch of um, uh, historism uh, uh, is devoted to find the truth itself and uh, the historians present the truth in those books. And here, in the middle of the 20th century, Natalia Ilina uh, writes uh, that uh, there are interpretations and uh, uh, this uh, is uh, rather, um, this is rather interesting and uh, um, uh, I will tell you a few words about it late, later. So uh, next slide, please. Yeah, uh, here you can read some words by Natalia Ilina, illustrating her idealistic views um, uh, to the methodology of history, yes. Uh, so we can see the notion of uh, the human soul. Uh, so the cell remembers the distant past, uh, yes. Uh, and uh, so the experiences uh, of uh, Ancient Slavs are examined in her book uh, with uh, this understanding of the human soul. Uh, um, uh, of course, uh, of course, she uh, um, uh, she uses uh, not only this uh, methodology of uh, um, uh, um, of. Um, expectations of experience, yes, uh, but uh, she examines the culture, music, uh, and uh, religious experience of ancient Slavs. Uh, and uh, now we go on to the next slide, please. Yes. Uh, Natalia Irina examines the culture and religions uh, and religion to show that these people uh, cannot be likened to immature children. Their spiritual experiences were very significant, and uh, this section of the book uh, is devoted to uh, proving that. Um, so here we uh, see uh, the words Tain Rusi. Uh, and which means uh, the miracle of Russia. And uh, here she discusses the culture and religion. 
uh, the next slide, please. That's striking that uh, in the middle of the 20th century in Switzerland, uh, she, uh, she wrote many pages about uh, things that are related to a female figure, figures and uh, uh, she wrote a lot about mermaid cult. Um, uh, in Russia, we call it Rusalka, Rusalki, uh, and um, uh, these uh, mermaids uh, became the mediators between the gods and uh, nature. Uh, and uh, uh, she tries uh, to trace their uh, to trace their history in uh, different books, and uh, in uh, she uses uh, different sources uh, and. Uh, now, I, I, I think that uh, here she does what not many historians, Russian historians do today. Uh, she points out our attention uh, to uh, this um, uh, female cult. Uh, next slide, please. And uh, this uh, is striking too that she writes about sisterhood. Uh, uh, she writes about rituals that establishes sisterhood and that's uh, important for her. Uh, and uh, um, uh, she writes about uh, the sounds of music, the songs, of these pagan songs, of course. Of course, uh, uh, these um, plays, mermaid plays, uh, in Russia, uh, we call these uh, Rusalne Igry, Mehmet plays. <laughs> uh, so uh, there are different rituals uh, that, uh, establishes, uh, that establish sisterhood, um, as she writes. Next slide, please. Mm -hmm. uh, and here we can see the slide which devoted to water and fire goddess. Um, so these rites of the ancient Slavs, Natalia Irina connects with the ancient goddess who embodies uh, the existential potential of love. The change of seasons among the ancient Slavs, their games uh, contained, uh, contained the veneration of the ancient goddess and praised love. It is love that must become the basis uh, for the new Russia. Uh, yes, uh, and uh, this goddess was forbidden, uh, and um, um, now uh, we can remember her and uh, create a new uh, understanding of history and uh, new future, according to Natalia Lina. Next slide, please. Uh -huh. uh, so we, can, we come to the part of why she almost forgotten. Yes. So I here I point out three uh, three reasons. Yes, uh, why somebody can be um, uh, can be not so well known or simply forgotten uh, in uh, uh, our uh, history uh, in uh, today uh, Russian historiography, uh, and uh, I want to tell some words. Um, about uh, Natalia Lina according to these three points. Uh, in literature and bibliogra bi bibliographical references, uh, she is a wife and uh, a daughter. Uh, her husband uh, is a renowned, uh, is very well-known uh, philosopher uh, who gained political importance after Putin uh, became uh, infatuated, uh, infatuated with him. So uh, her husband is called uh, one of the most loved Putin's philosophers. Uh, her husband's fame overshadowed her figure. Uh, her husband's uh, uh, collected works are so many volumes and uh, her works are printed inside his collected words, works. Uh, only a year ago, her drafts were posted and uh, not a single biography or m monograph about her work. Um, although since the 90s, everybody, uh, everyone who worked before the revolution uh, has been actively studied. Uh, then 
uh, a second post-Soviet stereotype conti uh, continued interest in history of work. In the 90s, in the former um, uh, Warsaw Pact countries, a search toward uh, the creation of alternative histories uh, presenting countries in a more majestic way. Um, uh, we can see this tendency uh, in many countries, not only in Russia. Uh, so interest um, in her work is functional as a resource for creating fantasies. Uh, there is no interest in, in how her text functions and in her as a thinker uh, in the context uh, behind her work, uh, only as the basis for the new fantasies. Uh, then uh, what, cons uh, what, concern what concerns uh, um, the second point, uh, the restrictions from the Soviet past, uh, it is not only the direct silencing and lack of knowledge about her in the USSR, it is the threat of um, reprisals for remembering her. Uh, the physical expul uh, expulsion of her from the USSR um, took place, as I have mentioned, and she was expelled along with her husband uh, and uh, one of her manuscripts remained in Russia, unsigned. Uh, had it been identified, it would have threatened the person who kept it. Uh, that's a real story. Thus, the peculiarities of the Soviet and post-Soviet period have left uh, their imprints and conditioned, uh, the, conditioned the invisibility of her work. Next slide, please. Thank you. Uh, so now uh, we came to the result uh, section. Uh, and uh, the first uh, point uh, uh, that uh, uh, her, her writings and Aaron Koenig's writings, uh, historical writings. Uh, here I came to Frank um, Anker Smith's um, 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 notions of historical writing, and it concerns not seeking the truth, but creating uh, uh, the writing itself about history. Uh, then, uh, Aaron Skunik and Natalia Ilina, uh, they have different historical positions on similar political outlooks, but their narrative spaces are close, they are idealistic, uh, and uh, they, uh, this, um, um, uh, um, uh, these narrative spaces um, uh, contain uh, some uh, conservative moments, uh, but for both Orthodox and Soviet Russia, um, paganism cannot be an inspiration, and that's why Natalia Irina uh, creates the new meaning for the future of Russia. Uh, and also she places the existential potential of love at the core of the Russian pagan worldview, and she proposes love as the basis of the new Russia. Next slide, please. Mm -hmm. uh, for Kunik, it's important to find the truth. Natalia Ilina Vokic explicitly says that we will not find the truth about uh, this subject, the Varangian question. Uh, she examines different points of view and she says directly, the truth cannot be found. And her historical writing belongs to the 20th century. Uh, Ernst Kunik's writing uh, is the example of historism. Um, according to Anker Smith's uh, notion. Natalia Irina Vokic reflects on creating the narrative that is based not only on the truth, but is fully constructed by herself. Um, and she speaks about her methodology. She bases her methodology uh, in the first part of her book. Next slide, please. Mm -hmm. Natalia Elina Vokic not only describes and explains uh, in her aesthetic passing, but she anticipates the next era of the philosophy of history. And here we can remember uh, the quotation from Anker Smith, uh, how much historiography really is part of the 
contemporary cultural world, uh, and that is ought to be studied in its relation to a contemporary painting, sculpture, and literature. What she does with uh, this Varengian question. Next slide, please. Yes, so I want to thank you for listening and uh, feel free to ask your questions now or maybe writing me uh, to my email. Thank you.